Freedom, the story Freedom by DJ Bas Clef. This story is about Skulu and Rainbow Dash, and it's 1400 words long. It's sad, it's got 12 likes, and here's the description. Skulu wishes only to fly, but never has. She leaves her friends and work by herself to achieve her goals, but she can only know how to fly when a cyan main gives her inspiration. It is rated for everyone, so please enjoy while we read the story to you. Freedom by DJ Bass Clef. Home, I thought as I walked to, to the shoddily constructed shed. The familiar scent of pine follow, flowed into my nose as the soft needles cracked ever so softly beneath, beneath my hoof. The pale moonlight, despite the branches of the groove, illuminated the path made four small wheels that I was so very accustomed to seeing. The night was starting to chill, and I would have been cold if it wasn't for my crusading outfit, though it did nothing to warm the ice off my soul. It was a beautiful remi reminder of how much of a failure I was. Today would have been a great day for crusading, sunny and pleasant temperature for so late in the autumn, but there was no such thing as the crusaders anymore. Months ago, Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle had gotten their cutie marks, but me? Never. My eyes started to water as the, over the thought of the two I used to be best friends with. I remember how Sweetie Belle's voice made the world stop to listen, and, I couldn't, and it could melt your heart. That's why she got hers, that magical voice of hers. Once or twice she came looking out for me with Apple Bloom. She sang a chorus over and over again, one that begged me to come, to come home. But I wasn't home, but I was home, here, in my shed, and it would take more than that singing voice of her to crack the steel of my heart. As I approached my home, so we, as I approached my home sweet home, I noticed the door was ever so slightly ajar. I smiled, my poor building skill, evident by, evident, evident by the innumerable protruding nails, many leaks in the roofs, and the hinged door had actually helped me. To fully close the door it has to be pushed up slightly, so I know someone pony, some pony who doesn't know that went through my shed. The loud creak resonated through the forest as I opened my door. A glance inside revealed that, it was, that no one was still there. I crept slowly through the dying mud, drying mud on my floor to my bed, constantly spinning circles to make sure I was alone. I sighed, sighed and was about to lie down when I no saw a note placed on my straw bed. It wasn't written, and there were no clues or arrows to point me in the direction, but its meaning was clear. Laying there was on, was on my, one of my small orange feathers placed underneath, as, as, as soft as the cy sky cyan one. Grammar. They say, uh, they say rain on a hoof can lull you to sleep, but not rain like this. This, rain, this torrent of rain assaulted my tiny shack, and the streams that fell down the walls and ceiling conver converted in the middle of my home into a mud puddle. It would not stop me, though. It, the inv invitation from yesterday was unconditional. She would be there, and so would I. I stepped out in the deluge of rain, no coat or anything on my back. I would walk into this meeting with dignity. I slogged through the mud on the trail of my previous ground. Streams of water ran down my eyes as they pelted, pelted me like rocks. I squinted my eyes, and the lights of Manhattan flashed before my eyes. How was school, Scooty, my dear? His mom's sweet voice asked. Bullies made fun of me for not being able to fly again. I replied from the couch, four legs now crossed, and my heart, head observing the pattern of the carpet. Sweetie, you know they're just early bloomers. You'll learn to fly soon enough, she said with a smile so that could light the city. Mom, when I was at QS's house, there was a bunch of pictures with her parents in the hospital, and her parents said every pony took them, so why didn't you? Did you not love me? Did you not have a camera? I blurted out that, I blurted out that night my wor world was shattered. Honey, come over here. She called Dad before looking deep into my eyes. It's time we talked. Scooty, she said in a gentle tone as she looked at me, sitting between her and, her, and Dad in, on that old couch. We are not your first parents. What? I shouted. We found you wrapped in a blanket outside our apartment building and took you in as our own. She explained. 
Why? Why would my parents do that? I whined. A violent whistle blasted as the train hurtled away from the city. I was alone, heading out into the world to find my real parents. Oh, that was fun. The, the crack of thunder brought me oh. back to reality, and I realized I had stopped. I continued walking, but the memories persisted in shining through the darkness I hid, hide them in. Go ahead. Okay. That first day in a small town, I was walking down the street. I heard a, the sweet voice of my mother singing, trying to call me home. I ran into a bush, and as she was passing me, I gasped. The tiny filly that was singing looked over to me and smiled as warm as she did, too. Who are you hiding from? I opened my eyes wide, trying to dispel the phantoms that haunted me, but the mare whom shortly I will see plagued my mind. I watched her dancing through the wildly windy sky in ways I could scarcely imagine. Filled by wonder, I observed the sky each day to catch some of the tricks I could hopefully do myself one day. I developed a fan club for her. She was my idol. I thought back to what Skula would have said about this meeting, how excited she would have been to meet Rainbow Dash. Not me. To me, she was just another pony who got in the way of my practicing. Part of me wished that she wouldn't even be there. Almost, actually, most of me did. But on that small mountain, uh, on that small hilltop, a smooth stone under the great tree, she sat, waiting for me. Once I was at the top and beneath the tree, she began talking, still back, back still turned. This is a weeping willow. Planted here so something would always be mourning the planter's love. This is a grave for some pony that was well loved. Why'd you tell me to come here? I asked bitterly. I asked nothing of you. She answered, turning to, now to face me. I simply gave you a gift. I wanted to let you know that you were as loved as this pony here. Did you look at it closely? Yeah, it was a feather that got some rain on it. Nothing special. I replied with a sm smirk, knowing she didn't think I was that observant. She stood up and began walking towards me. No, it never got touched by rain. I asked Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle if they wanted to add something to make it more personal, and they both shed a tear on it. My heart dropped as she said that, but I remained bitter. They both betrayed me. So what? Do you expect me to start crying and following me back to town? No. But you're here because you feel unloved. Look! I interrupted. I've had dreams and goals, but they always collapse around me. I've had enough! Scootaloo. She said, not directly in front of me. The Pegasi are the freest type of pony. We can fly in the open air and set our hearts free in the wind. She continued, closing her eyes and tilting her head to the sky. We're called the most spirited, and rightly so. But to fly, we need that spirit, that vigor. We need something to desire to be free. She inched her head forward and stationed it right next to my ear. Her warm breath heated my freezing skin. Set yourself free, Scootaloo. She whispered before trotting away, leaving me sitting. Tears joined with the rain to form a river down my face. For weeks, after Rainbow Dash had talked to me, I tried hard. I, I've tried hard than I and then ever to learn to fly, but each time I only hit the ground harder. One day, I knew this hill wasn't big enough for me to fl uh, for flight training, so I went far away from my home, far from town, and far into the mountains. I found a great cliff, hundreds of feet deep, if not thousands, and looked down. I looked at my prosthetic wings and took a deep breath, and did as Rainbow Dash said. I jumped. Whether I flew or fell, I knew one thing. I would be free. <laughs>